Hello, all of you being gloriously wonderful people, and welcome back to Timberborn. We start off today with a montage featuring sped up footage and some not, you'll see, uh, of several really big projects that I wanted to knock out. Um, well, here comes our first detonation, though. Hold on. Gotta watch the detonation. It's not very loud, though, because I zoomed pretty far out, though. The way it pans from right to left on the audio is pretty spectacular. Got a little loud there, but you know, we, we can deal with it. Um, essentially, we, we've been working on managing bad water and dealing with bad tides and making sure that our district is essentially immune from them. Uh, and I wanted to continue that, but they were really big projects. I mean, like this six and a half minutes at this intro was like four hours of gameplay. Uh, yes, yeah, so I recorded the whole thing and then edited it down. Uh, you'll also see some other little side projects here, like adding a bunch of builders and replacing all of our power wheels with uh, engines. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that I could get all bad water off the map. And that's what this first project is right here as we detonate uh, for the second time. That one, that one's way louder. Uh, this is over here by the one uh, full time bad water source that is on the map. Uh, Part one was getting in the, the bad water in alternate channel out of here so that it didn't flow through its little riverbed out into the main reservoir. And then the second part is damming it up with levees. I did go a little more extensive. The second part is over here by our other uh, smaller fresh water source. Um, I, I created a bit of a levee to make sure we wouldn't get any spillover during a bad tide. Uh, and then put in some gates that I can open and close, similar to those that we've done before, where it's open during fresh water, closed during bad tide, and then all of this dynamite to create a channel. And you can you can watch the dynamite numbers. I intentionally left the, the game controls up so you can see population changes and track how long all of this took. But you can see the dynamite numbers are going up and down, the bad water numbers are going up and down. But this was the first of two blasts because these were actually four tiles high. And I take that back, they were five tiles high because we've got to come through again with level two dynamite. So yeah, we did a level, we did dynamite three or straight three or whatever it's called for the first blast. And now we got to come back through the entire area lay even more dynamite and blast for this. And again, this is so that when the bad tide starts, this fresh water, when it starts emitting bad water, I have a way to route it right off the map without it ever coming to any of the districts. A little bit smarter on this one. I started from the middle, so it would go a little quicker instead of waiting for it to go end to end. But that gives us a channel. The water that's there will just evaporate it doesn't even have enough strength behind it to uh, make its way out but then i wanted to come over here for a project we're going to work on today uh but I, I there's this raised section in the middle that i wanted to get rid of i was running out of dynamite so i quickly bounced over added a couple more engines and some dynamite factories or explosives factories and that helped a lot um and this is what i'm hoping to accomplish over here is just open up a bit more space and a bit more fertile land. And you can see that we gained quite a bit of fertile land and we will uh, on this little hill here as well. But of course that meant, you know, just hours of placing dynamite. It, it did, it, the, this whole thing was just under four hours, like three hours, 57 minutes is what my total recording time was. So go ahead and get a blast one section off because I like explosions, why wait until the end? when I can just have a little gratification now. And of course, the second section got done pretty quick. And done, and you can see we got a lot more fertile land there. And then the final area, this is just behind where uh, our housing is in our current district. I wanted to bring this hill down 
and get it out of the way so I can use it for a buildable space without having to do a lot of stairs and platforms and things like that. I just thought it'd be nice to have it all one level, even though it is a little bit higher than the surrounding land. I keep getting interrupted by explosions. Uh, even though it is a little higher than the surrounding land, uh, it's still... It's worth doing, I think, because it gives us a lot more space to work with. That before was at so many different levels, it would have been challenging to get any buildings in there and things like that. I did go through after I recorded. I meant to record it and just forgot to hit the record button. And now there's a lot of decoration to this district. And you'll see that in just about a minute once we get done with this final blasting project here. Uh, but all in, we, we got two bad potential, but one permanent and one potential bad water source off the map. We created some more land in what we're going to use for a new district in just a few minutes. And then over here in our original district, uh, we created, I think, a more usable space. Uh, not that the space was unusable, but it had a big hill in the middle of it, and it just, it was awkward. So taking it all down to this level and then leveling this down then to the next level was was definitely a good thing. So let's watch our final blast here. God, that is just so unbelievably satisfying. Let's get today's build. And here we are, and you can kind of see lots of decoration. You can see a couple clocks in a couple different places, shrubberies, the the uh, braziers. I don't think that's how you say that. Brazier, yeah, brazier is a totally different thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, and just decoration, kind of all throughout. You can even see like shrubs over here if you, if you peek closely. It's everywhere. Um, there, there's not many areas that I didn't add some decoration. And just adding decoration brought our well-being way, way up. Like, I haven't added any new fun. It's just all from aesthetics. Uh, one of the cool things are with this mod are the metal staircases. And they give aesthetics. And, well, there's stairs everywhere in this district. So everybody's always getting that boost. Uh, I redid our water intake over here a little bit, but just to give you context of what we were looking at earlier, uh, this was our first project right here. Uh, I did bring the levee up just a little bit higher just to be safe because I also put a dam down here to keep it at a half meter so that even when a bad tide starts, there's still bad water here. Uh, though, honestly, that was a bit redundant because I have these over here that are set to automatically unpause during a bad tide. I kind of forgot I had built them because they're way over here. Uh, <laughs> I had recorded doing this, but it was such a short clip that I wound up not including them what you just saw. So yeah, doing this was a bit redundant, but whatever. So that was project number one. Project number two is way over here again, just to give you context of where we are. And it's the same setup. These gates will close, and these will open during a bad tide, and then they'll switch when it comes back to being uh, the temperate weather again. So we will no longer have bad water flowing down into this main area at all because this bad water used to come through this channel all the way out here and start mixing with this. And we were pretty contaminated here and then it kind of diluted and went off the map that way. But during a bad tide, it filled this whole area. Well, now that's not an issue at all. Um, and it makes me pretty happy. But you can see this was a big project to create this channel. I mean, that's that's deep. That, that's super deep. And that's what went through so much for dynamite. And then right here was the next project. Um, most of this area was all just arid land. Now we've got quite a bit of usable land. It does flood over here uh, at the end of a bad tide or a drought when the water kind of surges back through. But it goes away pretty quick. And then our fourth project was just right up here. There was a couple big hills that went up uh, two and then two more, and we got rid of all of that. So one of the things we did not look at in the last Timberborn series uh, was districts uh, and, and how they work. Oh, I failed to mention uh, one other thing. Hold on, we'll come back to that thought. We also have a big storage area here uh, with logs and planks and... Uh, scrap metal and metal blocks and even some gear storage over here. I did temporarily have some of our um, number crunchers 
right here, three of them in fact, that put out 10 an hour each, plus I had a regular inventor huts going at the same time, and I just added a couple extra of our engines to power it. Um, decided that it wasn't really necessary to keep now that I have unlocked like everything, everything. The only thing I have not unlocked are the things relating to bots. And I really, unless I hear from you guys otherwise, I just don't think we're going to do bots in this save. We did them last time, saw how they can, you know, bring a life of leisure. But these are the iron teeth. They like hard work. So why would I take away the thing they like? Even though, you know, there's nothing here that gives them happiness because they got to do a job and I think there should be. Anyway, uh, but we didn't, we never explored districts. So that is something I want to remedy. And to do that, we are going to add several district crossings, but we gotta be careful how we do it. When you have a district, they cannot connect anywhere by a common path. It just can't be a thing. So we have to go through here and ensure that anywhere that we're, we're coming in from the other district, that there's a district crossing or that we sever the path. Right here, that is gonna mean that we have to get rid of just uh, one uh, maybe even two of our uh, bushes there. No, it's just one that it needs to have gotten rid of. And that should be the only construction project, so we should have a worker come over and grab that fairly quickly. Maybe. Should be. Just waiting. No? Can oh, I bet a work yeah, a worker can't get down there right now. Um, okay, that's fine. I think if I add just a set of temporary stairs there, that might be close enough. Though you would think that would be close enough if that were going to be the case. This might be a challenge to get down there, too. Um, we might have to get creative here in how we do this. But we'll wait until morning, get those stairs built, and then see if they're able to reach this. So they're building the stairs, and indeed, they can get right over here. And that is what we wanted to see. And it's gone. Cool. And now I can just boop those stairs right back out of existence because we don't need them. So we've got to delete the path right here. Oops, not like that. There we go. And even though there's district gates here, they'll still be able to come through and build because I haven't created that second district yet. So in the workers from the original district will still be able to do everything that they need to do. Now, where it gets really challenging is like down here I want to be able to have a way for this district to get down and harvest the mangoes. Mang I can call them mangoes. Mangroves as well. Um, so what I'm kind of hoping here, and this is just giving me an area that it must be connected to two districts. It's only connected to one at the moment. Um, we are also going to quickly need a lot more beavers for these because each one really should have at least four, if not all ten. Because uh, they wind up moving a lot of goods. But it's a cool little two-sided two building. This one will be for this side of the district. And this one will be for this this district over here. And they work really, really well. I'm going to see if I can't get a beaver to come get rid of that. Yeah, it's not saying it's outside the district. So they should be able to get down there and get it. I didn't see anybody go down there, but it's not saying anything. So uh, once, oh, never mind, it's done. I'll say once morning comes, they'll be able to get it. But no, they they got it. So I want to do another set of stairs right there, and then I want to bring this. Oh, that's that's stairs. I want to bring that path right there, and then I want to get rid of this and this. I want this district to still be able to contribute to planting, but I I don't want them. Uh, to have to plant the whole thing. So I just wanna make sure we're still covering everything. So that one can get all of that. In fact, we could probably even expand some out now. And this one can still reach all of that. This dude can reach most of those and they will share because there's no path in the water. They'll they'll gladly share those uh, mangroves down there. So you know what, since we are going to be having two different districts relying on these mangroves, let's just go ahead and add just a few more since we know it is going to be doable now. I'm not going to go all the way out to over there because I may want to use that for something else in the future. So the only other thing we need to do now is replace that gatherer flag and we can just drop it in right here. 
doesn't really matter which side I put it on, it doesn't look like, but that side reaches to there, that side can't reach that, that's odd. So we will put it right here. Cool. And then I get that reestablished, there'll be workers there, and that's not a big deal. Uh, but that way, everybody in this district can continue to work on everything. Here, instead of getting rid of mangroves, I'm just going to bring the district uh, back a little bit, the district gate, or district crossing, to right here. Why? Oh, there's a path there. That's why I can't place it. I'm like, why can't I put it there? Because, genius, you got to get rid of the path first. That's why. Uh, and then here, I deleted one too many segments of path. And we're just going to let the game run full speed. So now we run into issues like right here. When we've got this path connecting, what do we do with it? And I think the best solution is instead of just building another crossing there, is to just do that. And then that completely severs that direction. Uh, and then we can do our next crossing here. So we're going to need to clear some resources. And I'm going to just mark everything for demolition right now. Uh, because we're going to want to use a lot of this land for other purposes. My thought right now is anything that's being produced over here, I don't want to be have produced over here and vice versa, with the exception being water. Um, I want these guys over here to be able to get their own water. That would be, you know, kind of handy. Um, you know what? I like this idea of these platforms coming down to form the path where it should be instead of having the path go ziggy zaggy so i think we will do that and then again right here um we will sever the path here so i'd like this side to be able to get over here no actually i take that back we are going to sever it here Yeah, we need to keep it severed there, too, though, because if they can come this way... Yeah, okay. All right, that's fine. Uh, and then I want to get rid of those two. And put a district crossing right there. Oh, I can still have... I can have this one, then. Never mind, because that's on the other side of the district crossing. But I would not be able to connect that one. It, it just... It wouldn't have it. Um, if I did, once... The, and I can kind of show you... Well, no, I can't yet, because I don't have all of my... Um, paths broken up yet. Gotta have, gotta have the crossings in there. And there we go. And I'm pretty certain that's everywhere, yeah? Probably not. I've probably missed one somewhere. I usually do. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I am thinking that maybe I do just want to put one here so that I can have the ability for them to just have multiple ways through. I mean, it's going to be redundant, but I think I'm okay with it. So if I go like that, I should be able to get one more right here. Oh, I don't have, I need to go back one. There we go. And again, you don't really need this many, which is why we're only going to leave them with uh, four for now on all of these because we just don't need them. Drought has begun. So I'm going to wait until they get that built and all this stuff cleared out, and then we will pick up from there. So I was mistaken. Adding these district crossings does limit the range of the uh, district. If I go through here, and we'll demonstrate what I did here, um, that bit was not connected and you can see that line that extends the reach of the district to there if i put this path back in which will take it back out in a moment but if i put it back in you can see the district now can go anywhere that's within reach of a path so now they should come and get all of this cut down for me and we're gonna let the the first district do some of the prep work but then the new district is, is going to kind of be on their own to do everything else. And cool, we have everything removed. Uh, I had to pause these uh, just so we would have enough 
workers because we didn't have enough workers to actually come do anything. Uh, so we have four food types over here, but these guys are going to be able to get their own mangroves. So I only want to build a few warehouses and we're going to get them, you know, we're going to we're going to start them off on the right foot. We don't want these dudes to, you know, be struggling from the get go. Um, what I want is to create a place to store some planks and some uh, logs and some metal blocks and maybe some dynamite. Yeah, and some dynamite as well. So we will do like this for, we'll do the bottom two as logs. And then we'll do this as our regular planks and these will be metal blocks right here. And then we're gonna come back this way. We're gonna throw in a medium warehouse and this is gonna be for gears. And then we're gonna put another one right on top. And this one is going to be for dynamite. I'm just looking over here to see, we don't need to bring them any scrap metal, but the problem is we're soon gonna have these guys being the only ones that are producing our scrap. Um, so we are gonna have to ship scrap that way, but that's not gonna be too much of an issue. And I'll show you how we set all that up in just a moment. So yeah, scrap metal will stay over here, but we do need to bring them planks. We need to bring them blocks, we need to bring them gears. We don't really need to bring them any extract. They wouldn't have anything to do with it currently. But dynamite, maybe not the worst idea in the world. And of course, they don't need bad water because they're not going to be processing any of it. And then we need storage for three different food types. Um, but we'll get to that in just a moment. First, we need to make sure that they are able to get to all of this storage that is on a second tier. And to do that, we're just going to utilize ladders that come off right like this way. And then do I want another one here? I don't think we really need another one right there. I think for now, this will be sufficient. And then I want to see the district center is three by three. It's not going to let me place it right now because it's connected. So that can go right there. And then I have a uh, room for three by three. One, two, three. Yeah, right off to the side. Good. Wanted to make sure I wasn't miscounting. So on this side, we're going to start them off with uh, water. Even though they're eventually going to have to do that on their own. But then I also want storage for the three food types right here. Um, and I think we could do something like that. And then we're even going to give them a little bit of well-being over here. We have the campfire kind of secluded back here all on its own. I kind of like that. So here we need, um, we do need berries because we're not going to be producing them over on the other side. We need the fermented cassavas and then we need uh, kohlrabis. And then once all of this gets built, we'll be able to put in, we'll be able to sever that over there and put in our district center. And then these dudes will be on their own. Once we're going to send, uh, I'd like to send 10 over, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So let's uh, get this section built out real quick. And that gets everything built. And I don't know why I removed the HUD after the fact, uh, but I want to, you can see they've already like pretty much filled up the Karabias, but I want to look at quantities now. Um, I'm going to set that to water and see what we want to do for the two districts. Um, and before we do that, I am going to go ahead and sever this, even though they haven't finished bringing everything over, it'll be all right. And these are all now disconnected from a district. Well, not for long because we are going to do that right there. And now this is... District 2. We need better names for our districts, but we'll cross that bridge at another time. So I just want to bring a path all back through here. It's like a little courtyard back there. I kind of dig it. Um, so that gets that connected up, but now we need to unpause these. And they're going to be like, hey, we don't have any workers. And I know. So one other problem that i think we just ran into is we've got these guys back here saying nothing to do in range because that's it for metal blocks or for scrap right now we're going to have to 
get our scrap from somewhere else. We have a mine back here, and we've already got a path kind of there. And then we've got another mine up here, but we don't really have a way to get to it. Mines aren't really efficient, but then again, neither is sending them running really far. Um, so I'm kind of torn on what we're going to do on the metal blocks. For now, I'm going to leave just, or not the metal blocks, but for scrap. We don't need a whole lot of metal blocks at the moment, so I think we'll be okay. Um, I, I think we'll be all right to do without scrap for just a little while. Um, but we we have options. I just I don't like doing the mines because they're just incredibly inefficient. Plus, right now I don't have a way to utilize the mine because they require. Um, having either gears and plank or treated planks and dynamite or just gears and treated planks but you can see that if you do the dynamite you get uh double the amount of scrap which we will want to do that recipe on the other faction that uh, makes research instead of just more uh scrap metal so cool we've got our district in uh, but we don't have anybody living over here, so we need to migrate part of our population. We have 13 beavers. I really only want 10. So we are going to take 10. Wait, no, I don't do automatic migration. My bad. I just want to do 10 like that. Cool. Done. And now over here we have 10. There's 15 jobs to do, however, uh, which is going to get even more. Don't worry. For now, we're going to bump all these down to just one and forget about it and then wonder later why we're not getting uh, any of our goods moved, but we'll figure it out. And you down to one, and then you should be at one already. Yeah, cool. Now, how do we do trade? Well, that's the easy part, honestly. So I kind of, this is where I want to look at quantities and what we have for storage over here. So over here, we've got... Um, Karabis, mangrove fruits, mangrove fruits, karabis, mangrove fruits, and karabis. So basically 300 of, of each of those, right? Okay, cool. And then we've got a berry storage there. Um, and then somewhere we've got fermented cassava. So we've got 200 of those. Cool. That's going to be where we start. So 300, 200, 200. So what we do is we come into here and we go to manage distribution. And this is where it gets a little confusing, but we're, we're going to, we're going to get through it. So anything that is being produced over here, we don't want to produce over here and vice versa. So we want to, um, basically go in and say, we're not going to, import those things though it's not entirely necessary but that will prevent them from taking them back from this side so we're going to get rid of all of the things that we are exporting to start with uh which is that and it will be treated planks eventually and then we want to come down here and on this none of the ingredients really matter but here on food we we don't want to bring those back uh, that is fermented cassavas, that is kohlrabis, and we don't want to do anything with the mangrove fruits. So that's good there, and then we don't want to take back any logs, we don't want to take back any water. Um, and that tells us what we're importing and exporting. Oops, I clicked the wrong button. Um, then we want to tell them where to throw, what, what? how much do we get rid of? And there used to be a way that you could um, specify quantities on this. And honestly, I, I think I like it. I'm not really sure where I need to set these, to be honest, um, because of the lack of quantity. I was kind of hoping that... Maybe we could still see that information. Uh, what if I go to global view? That gives you just both districts. No, it looks, it's been a while since I've played the districts. So yeah, the, the numbers just aren't there anymore. 
kind of miss the numbers, not gonna lie. But we'll figure it out. We'll we'll work it out. So give me a minute to uh, look at this and see what we need to do. Okay, so after reading through here, so we can completely disable import, or we can import if needed, and I think this is the key. I think this is where it's gonna take care of itself. So import the good only if there's matching storage. So in these cases, we have storage for these things or if there's a workplace demand. So like a building that requires that thing to be able to process uh, into something else um, or just always import it, period. Um, but you can notice that they, uh, the connected districts will balance good between themselves based on storage fill rates and custom export thresholds. I think these are the custom export thresholds. I don't really understand like <laughs> what the different numbers are. I'm gonna have to look this up and see if anybody's done any type of guide on it. But I'm pretty certain that right now we have things where they need to be. So I'm gonna unpause the game and double check that we are importing water. And it doesn't matter which one of these you click on, you can see that it stays the same. They'll just take it to the closest uh, district crossing to that good. And then these dudes will then, that work here, will then take it to the appropriate storage or building. Uh, and then over here, haulers will mostly uh, manage those goods for us. But I'm pretty sure we're, we're in good shape here. Um, I think we've got it all set up the way we need it to be. Of course, it's nighttime right now, so that doesn't do us much good. But these dudes need some place to live. Uh, they don't have houses currently, and that's problematic. I don't want to encroach too much upon any of our fertile land, so we're, we're going to get creative with their housing. Um, these big dudes can house 16. Whereas these can only handle 10, but I can get, so it gives me an extra six for half the space uh, that the other one, that two of them, or something like that. Yeah, it, it would go to there if I had two of the other one. Um, whereas here I can get 16 housed quite comfortably. So I believe we will go with the bigger one. One of these guys do eight and five. Okay, so we'll just go with one of these for now. And then our workers should immediately come over here, grab some logs and start building that so we can get some shelter over here. How their well-being over here is 20. I guess it's, oh, it's because they've recently been in that other district. Yeah, that's gonna drop. Uh, because this district's will be it's only 18. Uh, these dudes, because they got to sleep all day, um, but they've got some residual, but that number will drop. And then when we don't have a specific district selected, we see the average across both districts. So we're going to get a house built, and then we're going to also come back here and get them a couple of water pumps thrown in here um like right why can't i go there okay i can't go there can't go there oh it's hanging halfway off well this is gonna be tricky i'm gonna have to delete a bit more of this path and i can't get this one in hold on wait, wait i can we can spin it around so yeah we're gonna have to delete the rest of this path and that's okay because what that'll enable us to do is bring a path in um like here can't connect so I don't have to delete the whole path. I can just do like this. Yeah, this works, cool. So that gets them a couple of projects over there. They should be importing water now too. And then in this district, I do want to keep an eye on how many available beavers we have, because as we get more, I want to increase the number that are working in all these. Uh, you can see them going to get what they need. I thought haulers did it, but I guess not. Um, there used to be a way to prioritize these by haulers. But there's no goods in stock there currently. You can see it shows you what they're importing, which is currently nothing. But then if we go to this side, you can see what they're currently importing. And you can also see on this menu that they can't currently import it because it's disabled by settings, 
But if I were to change that, we would see that it's still blocked by the lack of storage and workplace demand. But we're gonna be making all of this stuff over here in this district, which is kind of cool. So we've got some housing and they've already got those built. Oh, these got built because these guys could probably reach that still. Yeah, they will help build from the other district. If it's within their range, they'll still come over here. And so that's why those got built and yet our house is still under construction. So there we go. We have housing, we have our district set up. So I think we're in a really good place. I know it's not a lot that we've done, but soon we will get uh, a lot of different crops going. Uh, we still have a lot of different food types we haven't even explored. Soybeans, but soybean to process them, I believe requires canola oil. Uh, corn, I think requires that as well. I know eggplants do for sure. Um, and then there's also, and I thought that they were in this menu, but maybe not. Oh, they're over here under food, that's right. Um, there are hydroponic gardens. Uh, plus this side's gonna make coffee for everybody. So that'll be fun. Maybe that'll be like the very first thing we do since they're getting food from the other district. Uh, maybe we will let them get coffee. The final thing I wanna do though, before we wrap up today is these dudes are going to need a way to um, have some baby beavers born. So for now, we're gonna give them just two of the breeding pods that should be sufficient um, and, and let them get started on that. So let's kind of go over here where we've got a good view of our, uh, God, that scrap looks like it's so close and it's so far away. God, that would be the better place to go than that mine, wouldn't it? It really would. Anyway, <laughs> getting ahead of myself because we are going to wrap up. We've gone on long enough today, so we're going to leave it there for now and say until next time, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.